Coming up on this week in Plymouth, fun new activities around the town, recaps of last week's meetings, and town manager Scott Whedon joins us to discuss the downtown project. All that and more coming up on this week in Plymouth. Welcome back to This Week in Plymouth. I'm your host, Dan Salzer. The Memorial Day Parade and Ceremony was held outside of Town Hall back on Monday, May 27th. Waterville Town Manager Mark Dakota spoke at the ceremony, as well as Select Board Chair Zach Terrell and local poet Kate Donahue. You can watch a full replay of the Parade and Ceremony on demand on our YouTube channel or throughout the week on Channel 1302. The following night, the Select Board met at Town Hall in the meeting room. Highway Superintendent Joe Fagnett met with the board to discuss the removal of a tree on Old Hebron Road during the public hearing, which was approved by the board. This hearing will be for the purpose of discussing and taking public comment for the removal of a tree and realignment of ditch lines for road maintenance of a scenic roadway within the town of Plymouth. The roadway is known as Old Hebron Road. The, the whole tree is pretty, pretty dead, it's not healthy, so it's a, it's a public has it to start with. We've we spent a lot of years chasing the gravel around at the top of the hill. The, the ditch line comes down and it ends right at that tree. The, the ditch line can't get around it. By removing that tree we can fix that ditch line and try to salvage our road and put it back where it needs to be. I do have one public comment here uh, from a Jean Ronickier uh, from 265 Old Hebron Road. It says, as a 28-year resident on Old Hebron Road, I would like to totally endorse the proposed removal of the tree identified and drainage ditch improvements. I hate to say it, but it should come down so they can ditch. Joe's absolutely right. That tree should come down. I'll make a motion that we approve the removal of the described tree and realignment of ditch lines for road maintenance on Old Hebron Road. All those in favor? Aye. 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 The select board also approved a purchase order to go ahead with a final paving of the rest of New Hebron Road. This is for New Hebron Road <clears throat> paving to include pavement reclaiming, a new drainage system, and roadside swales required to reconstruct roadway to current town standards. We opened bids on the on on May 9th. Uh, we had we had two bids, one from Ambrose Construction for the amount specified here in the agenda of two hundred ninety six thousand one hundred ninety six dollars forty one cents, uh, and then also from Jeremy Hiltz for four hundred and fifty four thousand one hundred and seventy two dollars. Mike Vignali is recommending that we move forward with Ambrose. Make a motion that we approve the bid. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Looking at the announcements for this week, the town clerk's office will be closed on Wednesday the 5th for the town clerk's spring conference. The highway department, fire department, and beautification committee and the solar array project have all have updates on the town website. Be sure to head over to PlymouthNH.gov to read the full details. Earlier today, I sat down with Town Manager Scott Whedon to discuss the final phase of the downtown construction and to help clear up any misinformation about the project. Join now with Town Manager Scott Whedon. Scott, thank you for joining us here on This Week in Plymouth. Thank you for having me. Downtown drainage project, downtown construction, it's, it's been the talk for the last few years, uh, most recently, obviously, with this construction actually taking place last summer and now starting back up again this spring. Tell us what has been done so far since the crews have come back here in 2024. So the crews came back in the end of April, April 28th, and what the direction was at that time was to make sure that we were creating a bypass for the main street. So the first work that was completed was reclaiming uh, Warren Street and Russell Street and putting a binder coat of pavement down so that when they moved onto South Main Street, if someone didn't need to go on South Main Street, they'd be able to take Russell Street, Warren Street out to Route 3 and head south. So that was the first course of work that was done. The second piece um, that we started working on was boxing out the Main Street. When I say boxing out the Main Street in South Main Street, what that means is removing the asphalt, the soil, 
and maybe most people don't know, there was a layer of concrete under the main street. So that started right after the completion of uh, Warren Street and Russell Street. Looking ahead now, what's going on with construction? I know there's been a lot of confusion and talk on social media about, oh, this is finally happening after it being dug up on South Main Street. But let's try to clear up some of the confusion. What's happening today with the project? Today, as you notice, we have completed the box out of Main Street. There's a binder coat of pavement on Main Street. Um, we did label two crosswalks uh, down on South Main Street. So the next part of the project moving forward over the next two to three weeks is the, are the sidewalks on South Main Street. So currently they're working on the west side sidewalks on South Main Street from Warren Street up to Highland Street. This week what will take place is the granite curbing, high profile curbing, will go in from Warren Street up to Highland Street. Next week the hope is as those sidewalks will be paved, the parking meters will be put back in. After that happens, the east side of Main Street, side of the Flying Monkey Theater, those sidewalks will be done in the same sequence as we did on the west side of Main Street. So that could take two to three weeks to get that done. The next part of the project that will occur is the stretch of Main Street from Highland Street down to the Rotary. And people may have thought that that was going to occur first, Unfortunately, Plymouth Village Water and Sewer ran into some issues with the New Hampshire Department of Transportation, and those have now been figured out and the approval has been given. So once South Main Street is completely finished, they'll move from Highland Street down to the roundabout in the same process as was used on South Main Street. Kind of throwing a little curveball. A lot of the discussion at the beginning of the project and throughout the project was the width of South Main Street. Has that been addressed or is that being changed to help uh, alleviate any congestion on South Main Street? As you'll notice in the area of the Panther Pub or the new Mid-State Building, that the sidewalk on the east side, side of Panther Pub has been narrowed a little bit to accommodate the road width. Also, the road was shifted a little bit during the box out and the reconstruction. So it's more of a um, consistent pathway as you can now Main Street now with less congestion. Looking ahead, bike week's fast approaching with the now hopefully having boxed out on the rest of Main Street. How is traffic gonna be affected? How is that being accommodated for bike week and all of the businesses downtown? There will be no construction that Friday of the start of bike week everything will have a coat of pavement that is ready for pavement at that time. There will be no gravel roadways um, down Main Street. So that will, construction will not take place on that Friday going into Blake Week. Obviously no construction on Saturday and Sunday and they will restart on Monday. At that time they most likely will still be down on the sidewalks on the east side of Main Street um, as I just discussed. And again, for those who might not know, what are the dates of Bike Week in that weekend that they're looking at stopping on that Friday and then restarting on Monday? So I think that Friday is the 12th, um, Father's Day being on the 14th, which is typically when Bike Week happens. Um, so that's the dates that it would stop is on Friday the 12th and restart up on June 15th. Million dollar question. When is the paving and the project looking to be completed by? I know originally it was around May if it was everything starting on time with a thaw and then obviously there's been delays, but what's the target right now for the completion of the project? I think being realistic and taking that approach and making sure that the I's are dotted, the T's are crossed, I would say the end of September, 1st of October. I think one other piece that's important is when they're working from Highland Street down to the roundabout and going around the common, is we all know that's a very busy area, mm -hmm. especially, it, it doesn't matter when, whether it's during the week or on the weekends, is what we will attempt to do is that section around the common down to maybe beyond the diner, beyond Court Street, once that's boxed out ready for pavement, that pavement will take place during the night so that when people get up in the morning, they come downtown, they go to the coffee shop, they go to the businesses, that will all be paved and ready um, to be parked on. 
A lot of other things happening around town besides just construction. Give us a quick insight of some of the major projects that have started or are on the horizon around town. I think a big one is the Solar Array mm -hmm. Project um, out on Quincy Road. Um, you'll notice if you drive out by the airport or out to Longview Farms, you notice that all the fencing is up, um, all of the racking has been delivered. We're in hopes that this week the racking will be started and some of the mounting of the solar array will take place. Um, other than that, the, that, those two are the big projects. Um, we are continuing to work on Highland Street. That construction will take place next summer during 2025. So we're working with New Hampshire Department of Transportation to nail down those dates um, and the funding uh, for that project as well. I think some of the bigger news is that we've applied for three different grants. Mm -hmm. We've applied for a $500,000 infrastructure grant. We've applied for a $300,000 Loon Lake Road culvert grant, which we've been told has been approved. It's a matter of finalizing that with Department of Environmental Services. And we've applied um, for a grant which is looking really good on 35% funding for the new highway truck that was approved um, at town meeting back in March. That's fantastic. Again, you've been so great since taking over as town manager of being after the public. We've always spoke about the transparency and, and having the information out there for the public. If people are new to town or haven't heard, how can people get more information? How can they contact you directly if they have any questions about what's going on? I am always open for people to stop into Town Hall. Um, I certainly will make time for you. Whether you want to send me an email at townmanager at PlymouthNH.gov or you can call me at 536-1731 extension 112. I will assure you I will return your call that same day as long as I'm in the office and not on vacation. But I truly believe in transparency, transparency honesty, honesty, and open communication. And I urge you, if you have questions, concerns, or comments, please do reach out to us and let us have a conversation with you about those concerns. And also feel free to attend any of the board meetings, the public sessions. Have your voice be heard as well. Scott, thank you so much for your time and joining us here today. Thank you. We'll be right back with more here on This Week in Plymouth. Coverage Your Programming for PBTV is brought to you by CG Studios. CG Studios branding, marketing, and consulting services. For more information, visit www.cgstudios.co. And by viewers like you. Thank you. The Recreation Department has lots of new activities and events to sign up for for this summer. We are happy to announce that here at PBTV, we'll be bringing back our summer camp and our focus this season will be on podcasting and social media. The program will be available to 4th through 8th graders. There are limited spaces available, so be sure to sign up today. The previously announced Ethical AI Use event has been rescheduled for the 26th of June here in the community room at Peace Public Library. Peace Public Library will also be hosting Alexandria Perry for an evening of poetry this Thursday the 6th at 6.30 p.m. Creating a Happy Habitat for Sleep with Dr. Rhea Abbott will be held on the 10th at 5.30 p.m. here at Peace Public Library. For more information about the event, please visit the library website at the information on your screen. There will be an After Hours movie night on the 27th at 5 p.m. with a showing of the musical film The Color Purple. It's time now for our final look at sports for the year. The Bobcats girls tennis team saw its season come to an unfortunate early end back on May 23rd. After an 11-3 regular season record, Plymouth entered the postseason as the third seed and received a first round bye. In a tight battle, the Bobcats fell to six-seeded Berlin in the quarterfinals. Baseball had high hopes entering the Division II tournament last week, looking at making another run to the NHIA championship game. Unfortunately, the fifth-seeded Bobcats saw their season come to a close after falling 4-0 to 12th seed in Hanover in the preliminary round last Thursday. Boys lacrosse stumbled into the postseason having lost the final four games of the regular season. The slump though did not phase the Bobcats who entered postseason action as the eighth seed and dominated ninth seed Guilford in the opening round with a commanding 12-2 win. The win advanced PRHS to the quarterfinals with a matchup with top seeded Pelham. The Bobcats unfortunately saw their season come to a close on Saturday 
and a heartbreaking 12-5 loss to Pelham. For the second time in three seasons, the PRHS boys tennis team stands alone atop NHIA Division III. After a thrilling undefeated regular season, the Bobcats picked up back-to-back 9-0 wins over 8th-seeded Trinity in the quarterfinals and 5th-seeded Prospect Mountain in the semifinals. The Bobcats battled back from behind against 2nd-seeded Kearsarge. PRHS swept the doubles portion of the match to, to secure a 5-4 win, securing the second state title in school history. Congratulations, boys. The PRHS track and field team had a successful postseason run, and it continues to this day in Division II. Going back to the state meet back on May 24th, Sydney Valenti placed second in the triple jump with a new personal record. The girls' 4x800 meter relay team finished runners up, while the girls' 4x400 team placed sixth. Additionally, Annie Flynn and Gabe Keane both qualified for last weekend's meet of champions with top five finishes of their own. Flynn tied for eighth in the high jump with a jump of four feet, 10 inches. Tate Heyman placed 12th in the boys' 1600 meter run. Keen finished 15th overall in the javelin throw and secured a top 10 finish in the 100 meter dash with a personal record of 11.16 seconds. The girls' 4x800 relay team consisting of Ellie Englund, Regan Sutherland, Addie Englund, and Sydney Valenti placed fifth at the meet of champions with a school record time of 10 minutes, 32 seconds. Valenti took silver in the triple jump with a personal record of 34 feet, 10 and a half inches. The girls four by 800 meter relay team, Ellie Ungland and Sydney Valenti have all qualified for the New England championships this weekend. Congratulations to all the spring teams and athletes who represented Plymouth this spring. Looking at this week's announcements, the Plymouth School Board met yesterday on the 3rd at 6 p.m. Additionally, the Housing Opportunity Program Committee had a community meeting held at the high school at 6.30 p.m. You can watch a full replay of both of those meetings throughout the week on Channel 1302 and 1301 respectfully and also on our YouTube channel. The Water and Sewer Commissioners, Pemmy Baker Regional School Board, and the Zoning Board will all have meetings tonight this Tuesday the 4th of June and the planning board will be meeting on the 6th to continue discussions about the proposed hotel at 6.30 p.m. in the meeting room at Town Hall. For executive producer Jonathan Picard, I'm Dan Salzer. Thank you for joining us, and we'll see you next time here on This Week in Plymouth.